You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Happy Friday morning, everybody. I am Glenn DeGee coming to you from Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings, and I'm in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Friday, November 1st, episode 3553. This episode is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. Hello, horse people. It's Friday, and another weekend of riding is a few short hours away. Jamie and Glenn are here to help you make it through the day. With some fun guests and some really bad acts. Enjoy the show. We do have a fun show planned for you today. Our friend Lisa Waisaki is going to join us to talk about groundwork. That's something that Jamie and I both know a little bit about and the importance of it. She'll have some exercise for you, exercises for you to try at home as well. And do any of us match up to the house cleaning guidelines published in the 1960s for housewives? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and answer that one, Clark. That'd be a no. <laughs> you know, I'm always picking on uh, you horse women for cleaning the barn perfectly and leaving the house as a total disaster. But ah. Uh, I think I might even fail on a few of these. Plus, we give away the prizes for really bad ads today, and we'll have a whole new batch of bad ads for you. Plus, we'll do an auditor post show. We're going to talk a little bit about something Jamie's been giving Anna a new experience in life, oh, and Lord. we're going to find out what that is. Before we get to, uh, I have some statistics from last night for Halloween, and I want to talk to you about your Halloween and how Anna made out, too, in her first American Halloween. But what's one thing you probably shouldn't get a week after nasal surgery? When you're in recovery, I would go with a sneezing attack, a cold. Yes, that is oh. the one thing you probably shouldn't get is a cold. And Jennifer shared hers with me this week, so Aww. so that's fun. So if I uh, if I disappear for a while, it's because I'm having a coughing fit. And if my voice sounds extra funny, it's because of both of those things. But you said you weren't allowed to blow your nose for, <laughs> for like another week. Uh- Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. I would die. Yeah, <laughs> it's the cold's not the thing you want right now. Well, last night, an estimated 72 million Americans, most of them age 5 to 14, hit the pavement for trick or treating. Americans spent close to $12 billion on costumes, decorations, and candy, almost $4 billion on Halloween costumes, $3.5 billion on candy. $3.5 oh billion on candy. <laughs> Each household spent an average of $51 on candy this year, a jump in cost due to the 50% rise in chocolate prices. Almost half of Americans decorated their homes or lawns. I'm not buying that one. I didn't see. We drove around for a while yesterday. I didn't see anybody decorated for Halloween. Maybe that's in certain areas. I don't know. 30 million pumpkins were sold. (laughs) And they said here thousands of Home Depot's popular 12-foot skeletons. So I don't know if you saw any of those. I will tell you. I saw so many lawns decorated yeah. last night. So I kind of had the different thing and, and pumpkins. I saw the funniest. It was like a skeleton that you could see the arms and legs, like and the head reaching up out of the dirt, but there was no torso. It was reaching up out of the dirt and it was given like a peace sign. <laughs> it's like, what's up? <laughs> I think too, probably if you're more in suburbia and, you know, housing developments and stuff, you probably see it more. We're really rural here. So, oh, yeah. We yeah. go to my sister in law's neighborhood to trick-or-treat so it's it's like kid driving home reminded me of the scene in et where they're like driving there's just like kids everywhere on the sides of the roads dressed in costumes it's i love halloween i think it's so fun i'm trying to cherish every single one of them with lucas and and we did have some we did have some fun with his costume glenn all right did you see what he went as i did but tell everybody about it we'll put am i allowed to put that in the show notes by the way Of course, of course. You can put the little family photo there because I made Chad put something on. I'm like, you will wear something. (laughs) We only have a couple more of these with our child before he leaves for college. So he put on his old like baseball jersey from when he was in the Air Force baseball team. And then Anna and I put on our little cowgirl uniforms. And Lucas, he was a three amigo. He says he was Dusty Bottoms from the Three Amigos. We had just seen the movie. And I love going to Goodwill because they have 
like the best dog toys, giant stuffies, Winks and Homer love to carry around stuffed animals. So we go there, we buy giant bags. Well, they had all these Halloween costumes and they had this three amigos costume at Goodwill for like four ninety nine, And it was just this black, you know, the kind of outfit. I was like, dude, he was like, I'm going to get that. I'm like, we're going to go to Michael's. And we are going to get glue, fabric glue, and sparkles. And we did it up. We made sparkles all over this Halloween costume. It was like one of those like mother, son, and a help. We were like all sitting around doing arts and crafts and made it. And people were like, wow, that's such a fancy costume. He's like, thanks. <laughs> was, so I was like, well, maybe I can get two more so he can actually be the three amigos and that costume that he bought i went online good lord it was like 60 dollars it's insane what halloween costumes cost and i mean i was walking around last night i was like looking at people's costume i'm like that's 90 bucks that's 47 (laughs) dollars like i I knew the whole price for everything so it it, when you talk about how much people spent 3.8 billion on halloween costumes I, I I totally see that. I mean, I see it's amazing. Uh, Anna went as an Oklahoma cowgirl. She did. She did. So, <laughs> so I was Captain Marvel a couple of years ago, and so I handed her that outfit, but it was a little little big. She's a little. <laughs> she's tinier than me. So we both just decided to get dressed up as cowgirls. We put on our outfits and went out on the town. It was really fun. Do they really do that fun. in Germany? Trick or treat like we did. Okay, so interesting. We're walking around trick or treating, and she always has these comments. <laughs> oh, first of all, saying trick or treat in German is like this really long, aggressive word, and it actually translates to sweet and sour. <laughs> The translation for trick or treat is sweet or sour. So that was really fun. But she's walking around. She's like, oh, my gosh, because she was like, I can't trick or treat. Of course you can. We all go. She was like, no, it's only for little kids. I was like, not here. (laughs) Not here. (laughs) There's plenty of teenagers out trick or treating. So I guess in Germany, the only people that trick or treat are really little kids. The other thing she noticed was every house in Germany, when you come up to it, is designed to terrify the children. Like oh. if you, it, she's like, I have so many traumatic memories from trick or treating. She was like, and everybody here is so nice. <laughs> People are so nice here. Nobody's trying to hurt anybody. <laughs> the other thing I learned now, was Germany, when you, tr- 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 Halloween sounds oh, traumatic. <laughs> yes. It sounds terrifying. I was like, but they don't like traumatize little kids. She was like, Oh Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> they want to terrify the small children. Mm-hmm. And so when you get up to the door in Germany, when you, and, and this is just her experience, you have to provide a limerick of sorts, like a limerick or a, a, a phrase. And the more clever your phrase is, the more candy you get. So if you walk up to the door and you say, trick or treat, sweet or sour, you get like a piece of candy. But if you say, trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat, you get more. But like even more creative. She was like, you'll, you basically work on your limerick before you go out trick or treating and you can use the same one at every house, but you get rewarded for how clever you are. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I know there's a place in the United States, I forget what it's Michigan or one of those in Wisconsin, where they go around and, and what they have to do is tell a joke. You tell a joke to get your candy. That's she said that's one of the things they do. You yeah. can either tell a joke, you come up with a clever saying, come up with oh, something God. and you know how many you bad pre- jokes that is in one night for the poor people answering the door. <laughs> you miss <laughs> Ashley doing horse jokes. Oh my God. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> hey Glenn, why do horses jump really high? Why? Because they have frogs in their feet. <laughs> that well, actually that wasn't note. even hers. That was an auditor's. <laughs> Well, happy birthday to three of our auditors this weekend, Michaela Webb, Brennan Dennis, and Cynthia Rowland. Happy birthday to all of you. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. (laughs) 
Well, my daily Winnie, this is such an exciting weekend of horse racing. It is the Breeders' Cup going on all weekend long, but also, as importantly, Caldera. Huh? More importantly. Well, more importantly to me, <laughs> but I know we have some auditors, Clark included, who also have some vested interest in the Breeders' Cup. So let's start with our horse. Caldera is running tonight. Race five, post position six. Post time is 314. Now, Glenn, is that Eastern time? I'm assuming because it's yeah, Churchill, Churchill Downs. Yeah, Churchill Downs is Eastern time. <laughs> so you guys, if you have your little betting apps, I would... I would maybe not bet this yeah, one because it's, <laughs> it's his first ever race. Don't go all in, but he could do very well. I mean, he's really fast. To show. <laughs> it's just hard when they're, when it's their first race and they're like, what is going on now? D Wayne Lucas is known for using races to get the horses fit. So yeah, I think he's in good shape, but I mean, it could be crazy. So anyway, call Dara Churchill Downs, Race five, three fourteen. Also, huge shout out for our very favorite Breeders' Cup running horse, Seize the Gray. He is post number six in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. The Dirt Mile is a fantastic race. Remember, last year's winner was Cody's Wish, and oh, who yeah. did not love that horse? So, Seize the Gray is going for, it, and he's currently sitting at like ten to one. So, kind of thinking them. Might get involved in that one. But yeah, so good luck to everybody. The Breeders' Cup Classic is a field like, oh my gosh, the field. strongest fields. Yeah, yeah. and incredible. So I, I can't help but pull for Sierra Leone. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Very good. Coming up this weekend in California. Hey, on that, before we go into our guest, I wanted to mention, speaking of horse racing, that you remember Congress passed the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Act in 2020 that created a, a, a an authority to basically, you know, enforce the rules around drugs and all that stuff in horse racing. Well, of course, you know, a bunch of people took it to court and said they don't have the constitutional authority to do that. And the circuit court said, yeah, this, this, you know, this integrity and safety authority, they can issue subpoenas, they can conduct searches, and, but they can't levy fines without approval from the Federal Trade Commission. And that's forbidden by the Constitution. And then it went to the Supreme Court. Well, the Supreme Court came back and reversed the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals and said they do have the authority to enforce federal anti-doping laws. And the problem was, they, because this is kind of an independent authority, the people suing were saying, you can only give that kind of authority to a government agency. And, and, and the, basically, Congress said, this independent authority has that. So the Supreme Court backed it up. And so that means that the independent authority, the drug you know, authority, can enforce and levy fines. They're allowed to, according to the Supreme Court. Now, there's a bunch more cases making their way through court. But as of right now, they have all the powers they need to to get the job done. You know, people just weren't dirtbags. It would be like, that. this would be a piece of cake. We wouldn't have this problem. But yeah, that, that came down yesterday. And in my opinion, that's a good thing. I, I think we needed that. And thank you to the Supreme Court for ruling one the right way. Also, before we get to Lisa here talking about groundwork, Radiothon, I spent the last two days posting the prizes that we have for Radiothon this year, which is December 1st. You have 15 days to get your, your music, your poems, your entries in. You have till November the 15th to do that. Remember, everybody that sends in an entry, like a song or something like that, gets three entries into the prizes. We have our $4,000 and prizes again this year. So there's Ooh. a ton of them. And I believe me, it took me two days to put all the prizes on the website. If you go to HolidayRadiothon.com, you'll see them all listed there. And you can just enter to win. You can just enter yourself and get an entry in to win without sending anything in too. So everybody is eligible to enter to win the prizes. I know it's a little early to start thinking about the holidays. We just got past uh, Actually, Halloween. But what's funny is... I met so many people who were like, do you know what tomorrow is? I was like, November 1st. They're like, the start of Christmas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and for me, it definitely is. <laughs> All this prep and planning. Hey, one other thing, too, is Kelly Heard Jewelry came through again. They're going to have one of the grand prizes of a $250 gift certificate for his great uh, oh. equestrian jewelry. But... 
They're also putting up a $250 gift certificate. Remember last year we did a ugly sweater contest for the auditors? And the auditor, and this could be your horse, you, your dog, whoever had the ugliest sweater, we submitted pictures and we picked a winner. We're going to do that again this year, and they're putting up a $250 gift certificate for that. So auditors, something to look forward to. Get those ugly sweaters out, either on you or your horse or your dog or your cat. I don't care. Put them on your, put them on your skeleton that's left over from Halloween. I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Be creative, and we'll pick a winner probably middle of December for that. So there's a lot going on with Radiothon. Get your creative juices flowing. I've already heard from a couple of people that are working on it now. It's HolidayRadiothon.com. All right, let's hear from Kentucky Performance Products. And I have to tell you, which I haven't yet, and I'll tell everybody at the same time, they have committed to another year here on the show. We just heard that news yesterday. So this will be the 15th year that Kentucky Performance Products is advertising with us. So thank you to Kentucky Performance Products. Frequently Asked Questions brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. My older gelding is having trouble holding his weight, and I'm afraid to feed him any more senior feed. He gets all the hay he wants. What do you recommend? Many older horses are eventually unable to maintain acceptable body condition on a typical diet of hay and grain alone. When you want to add calories without the risk of digestive upset, we recommend Equijewel Rice Bran. It is an excellent source of easy-to-digest calories for older horses. The fat in Equijewel is a concentrated energy source. It will increase calorie consumption and improve body condition without risking grain overload. Start your older horse on a quarter pound per day and work up to one or two pounds per day over a few weeks. Remember, small meals fed three to four times per day will help your older horse better utilize the feed. You can learn more about Equijewel at kppusa.com. Got questions about your feeding program? We can help. Email Karen at questions at kppusa.com or call us at 859-873-2974. I'm so pleased to welcome our first guest to the show because it's our friend Lisa Waisaki. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Glad you're here. I'd love hearing your voice. Well, we actually have you on, not to co-host today, we have you on as a guest to promote your next clinic. It's called Grounded with Horses. Now, for those of you who just, you know, Lisa is an author and a co-host here, but she also has like another whole world and uh, she's a path instructor and you've done a lot of these clinics and you used to do expos and horse fairs, but then COVID hit and you kind of had to fall off and and do other stuff. And now you're back and you're going to host a clinic at Colby's Army. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be so much fun. And, you know, Jamie, you teach a lot. You know, you do a lot of these. And I've really missed it. I've really missed, you know, helping people connect with their horses. And, and as you probably do, I, I learn as much as, as the people, you know, when I'm teaching. So it's just a lot of fun for me. And so I'm so excited uh, to get back into this. It is too. It's a great refresher for you when you're going back through teaching it. You're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes you makes you better at your job when it you does. practice your job. It does. It really, really does. And and as you said, I used to do a lot of the the big horse fairs and expo expos pre COVID, and and you know I'll be doing a couple of those in 2025, and excited to you know to get back into it. Cool. Well, tell everybody, what do they do in your clinic? (laughs) So, so... I thought that because it's at the end of the year and a lot of us have limited riding opportunities in the winter, either we don't have a covered area or the weather's bad or the footing is bad, you know, let's do a ground clinic. We call, we're calling it Grounded with Horses. And, you know, just to share some of the ground activities that I do with the the horses here at Colby's Army. And Jamie, I know you are, are just an expert in groundwork. Uh, Glenn does a lot of groundwork and, and it's I don't think it's anything we can really do enough of, but sometimes we get bored with what we're doing. Well, so. that's the thing, too, if I can jump in. The, yeah, the yeah. problem with using the word groundwork is 
that's such a broad term. Yes. People go, oh, I have to do groundwork. But you have to do everything you do when you're training a horse should have yes. a purpose. Yes. And it should have a yes or a no. And and it, it, there's no, it's, it's black or white, it's not gray. So I see a lot of people, who, you know, on like when I'm looking for really bad ads and they post a video and I'm like, oh God, what are you? <laughs> like, I don't know what you're telling your horse. Well, how does your horse know what you're telling your horse? So right. I think a very important part of groundwork is it's not just a term it's it's a it's a there's a purpose yes and it's very broad so what type of groundwork things do you do at this clinic so we're going to learn a couple of of things that that people may or may not be doing and one of those is what i call resistance free leading and you know so every time you you tug on your horse's halter you're creating pressure on the horse's pole and and depending on the halter that you have other sides of the, the horse's face and some horses need a little of that but most do not so, so by using resistance-free leading, you're not creating any pressure. Pressure can create soreness, and soreness can create behavior problems. So, so by by leading without any resistance at all, and, and by that I mean you're you're holding on to the lead rope, but you're not really putting any pressure. Your horse is responding to your voice and your body cues. And as you said, you're being very clear, you're teaching your horse something, you have a purpose, and you can do it in your barn aisle if the weather is bad. So basically what, what I'm doing is I'm using my voice and I'm using a voice command and, and here at Colby's Army, we use walk on. Uh, you could use, I don't know, the word elephant to teach your horse yeah. to move forward, you know, just whatever, whatever you want. You know, to get your horse to walk on at first, you might have to give it a tiny tug on the lead rope. But once once your body starts moving and that horse receives that clear voice command in a, in a tone that is commanding, but yet gentle, that horse should walk on. Now, this is going to be in the horse's time frame, and it could be the first day you do this. It could be the first year you do this. It's always in the horse's time frame for me. And and so you're going to teach this horse to walk and turn and stop and back up just by using your voice and your body. The progression of that is, is then you can then create a little obstacle course and you're leading your horse through the obstacle course without touching the lead rope. That's the the ultimate goal. And I, yeah. I love that. It's, it's a, it's, the beginning of it is light pressure, but then release. Horses learn through yes. the release. Exactly. So if you can, so they're also associative learners. So if you can associate that voice command, and I love how you said you have to make sure that you're saying it in a clear manner because I remember teaching yes. riding lessons and I get these little girls and they, I'd be like, ask him to trot. And they'd be like, try. Exactly. I'm like, no, no, it's not a question. <laughs> Please? Yes. yes. No, trot. Trot. Yes. <laughs> and in yes. driving, we have to add something to that, too. I use use the horse's name with every command. Yes. And that's and because if you have a pair or or even just going out with other carriages or riders, when Jennifer and I are out, if Jennifer says trot on to her horse, I don't want my pony trotting on, you know? So that's why we use names every time, too. Glenn, You're just so complicating things, Glenn. No, Come on. No, no, no. No, no, because because you know, really in a therapeutic riding lesson, I I would always have have our leaders say Tessie walk on or or Andre walk on whoever we're we're leading because if we're talking to the leader, we're talking to the sidewalker, we're talking to the rider, the horse needs to know that you're talking to the horse. Mm. There you go. So that then you're sense. teaching it its name too. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Plus, the other thing I found that's so cool about this is horses, I think, can get disengaged mentally and emotionally with what we're doing. And they just kind of follow along and they're like, oh, yeah, OK, we're doing this again. By doing the resistance free leading and working up to leading through obstacle courses, there are folk, they are focused on you and they are more engaged in what they're doing and they learn to like the activity a lot and they learn to enjoy it. So it's, it's something new and fun that you can do with, with your horse. And again, it's, it's not anything that requires good weather or good footing or, or anything like that. You can do it in the barn aisle. Okay. What are some other things that people get to do at the clinic? Oh, yeah. So we're going to be doing some hand signals, some work with hand signals. So one of the hand signals that I use very frequently is I'll hold my arm out like a police officer at a school crossing. Stop, uh, Steve. And the stop. 
Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it's teaching your horse. We're working in the round pan and we're teaching the horse, you know, we'll, we'll ask the horse to come to us, but then we're like, whoa, and holding out that hand. And the ultimate goal is to get your horse to respond to hand signals. And I will say, Jamie, this has saved me several times in lessons, several times. I had a child who was learning to trot off lead and decided, you know, he'd watch that Western cowboy movie over the weekend and he wanted to, you know, he wanted to gallop off into the sunset. Giddy up. And, you know, I just stood up there and made myself really big and I held out my hand and I said, Rosie, whoa, and held out my hand. And, you know, that horse stopped from a gallop. Well, that's amazing. Is that something you can do? Like, first of all, if it were work with my dogs, that'd be great. Stay, yeah. <laughs> stay, <laughs> backing away, stay. No, and yes. they're like, hey, let's go. So is that something that you can do to teach your horse to ground tie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's so many practical applications. And, you know, there, there are other hand signals that we're going to be working with and, and using to get the horse to move or, or whatever. And the beauty of that is, is, you know, they work, you know, you don't have to be right up against the horse. For the, you can be 50 feet away. And if the horse can see you, you know, if they know what they're supposed to be doing, they're really thorough in their knowledge of this. They'll they'll respond appropriately. So is this clinic open to all disciplines everybody. and types of people and horses? Everybody, everybody. And so we're just going to be working with the Colby's Army horses here on property. And yeah, it's open to everybody, all skill levels, beginner, advanced, people who are just thinking about getting into horses. It's, it's, that's the other beauty of these activities is, is you don't have to be uh, an expert rider to benefit. So... Can people bring their own horse or just keep no, it to the... this time we're just doing working with the Colby's Army horses here. We might uh, expand that. Yeah, we're just kind of easing back into this. So and, and the other portion of that is we don't have a covered area either. So we're kind of we've got a you know, here's here's the plan. If the weather's good, here's the plan. If we've got some rain. So so either way, it's going to be fabulous. As Monty likes to say, have a plan. Don't exactly. fall in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> so if people want to come, where how, where do they go sign up? Yeah, it's groundedwithhorses.eventbrite.com. And all the information is right there. It's just groundedwithhorses.eventbrite.com. Now, here it says some people may not make it to Tennessee, but they can get involved in another way. In another way, yeah. So we're going to be doing a couple of other things that are going to be online and Zoom things. We don't have an actual plan yet, we're, you know, <laughs> but we will be doing that. We're going to be doing a lot of Zoom things over the winter, and it's going to be just so much fun. So for that, just just send me an email at lisawysaki at gmail.com. That's now Perfect. that Lisa got her fiber internet and actually can do anything at the bar. I know. It's so <laughs> much fun. <laughs> That's awesome. It's such a game changer. Well, hey. I'm so glad you came on to talk to us. We're not going to let you go, though, Glenn. Glenn yeah. has something up his sleeve. Yes. Yeah. And oh, did no. we say how they sign up? Yes. Okay. Yes, Ground we did. With horses. Okay. Eventbrite.com. Got it. Uh, if you could hold on, do you have a couple of minutes? I do. Uh, this is you're a little gonna scary, love though. this next segment. <laughs> 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 Jamie, why don't you tell us about Valley Vet, and then we'll <laughs> go to our next segment. Did you know that 90% of parasites in horses come from the environment they are exposed to every day? While eliminating parasites from their environment may be difficult, protecting your horse against parasites with trusted equine dewormers from Valley Vet Supply is easy. At valleyvet.com, you can find gold standard parasite control solutions perfectly timed for all your horse's fall deworming needs. Founded by veterinarians in 1985, Valley Vet offers offers fast, same-day shipping and exceptional value. Equestrians love shopping at valleyvet.com because it's their one-stop shop for their horse's needs. You too can simplify your shopping experience at valleyvet.com, your one-stop shop for dewormers, prescription medications, vaccines, tack, barn supplies, so much more. You can get it all there. Enjoy fast and free shipping on most orders today at valleyvet.com. Jennifer ordered her, her vaccines recently and gave them to the horse. 
I do so much shopping with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I found this. It was a meme that came across. I belong to this Grandma's Recipe Facebook page. They actually have a Why? lot. Why? Of- because <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of good recipes. I actually, did, I like the recipes, but they came across this. This was a flyer that was printed up in the early 1960s. Now, I was born in 62. So this is about the time I was born. But it's, and this is when housewives were quote unquote housewives and they didn't work. They were supposed to take care of the house. And this was a list of how a flyer that they put together, Lisa, on how to keep a clean home, basically, that didn't say it in here, but for your husband. Oh, no. Because that's how it was back then. <laughs> So we all know how clean horse people are in their barn. Let's see if we match up to any of this list as far as the house is concerned. Now, if you have a housekeeper, Jamie, <laughs> we have to just make believe you don't have one. Okay. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. Just, uh, every two weeks. Uh, well, that's not even a housekeeper. That's just somebody that comes in and straightens out the mess every two weeks. I so, have to. I have to work so hard to clean my house for the house. The lady comes yeah, in. That's right. Her name is Amy. She's amazing. I love her to pieces. I, I call it adult Christmas. I'm like, adult Christmas is today. We had our big house with the boarding stable. The house was 5,000 square feet and had six bathrooms. We had a housekeeper because I couldn't do it. So anyway, how to keep a clean home. Now, this is broken down to, to time frames. And this is what we should be doing every day, Lisa. You should wash your dishes and wipe the kitchen sink every day. I probably do that one. I do that one. I keep the kitchen clean. Our dishes, oh, no, I, yeah. I, I live dish- in a tiny house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if she doesn't, she's going to be sleeping in her dishes. Yes, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I do that one. Wipe down all countertops. Well, nope. Maybe every other couple of days. I don't think I do wipe down all the countertops. It, it's day. just a yes or no, Glenn. Okay. Yes or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lisa? Yes. Oh, yes. Huh? You're winning so far. Take out the garbage and recycling. Well, you got to do it at some point. I mean, it adds. Yeah. I don't know if I do it every day. I do it when it's full. I don't think I need it every day. Uh, I I do it every day, but but my garbage can is the size of something you might have in your bathroom. So it fills up. (laughs) Pretty quick. (laughs) Yeah. Now, this is the old days when you hung your clothes out. When, when I was mm-hmm. growing up, we had one of those lines that went down to a big pole and my, mm-hmm. over the yard, and my mom put all the – there was no dryer. Wash and hang one load of laundry every day. No. No. Definitely not. No. <laughs> no. No. Chad does the laundry, but only because it gets to where we have no clothes left. <laughs> <laughs> he needs clothes for work. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I can wear stuff again. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need that. I'll just turn my underwear inside out. Like, we can keep, I can power on. And he's like, uh, no, I have to actually yeah. have Yeah, clothes. they expect pilots to look like clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is every week. This is where we start to fail miserably as horse people. Wipe down kitchen appliances. Every no. week? No. No. Once a month, maybe. Clean toilets, bathtubs, shower, and sinks. I do that every week. Uh, no. Well, no. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not the bathtub. I'll take that out. Polish the mirrors. Who the hell no. does that? Uh, no. <laughs> I was going with you, Glenn. Who the hell does that? <laughs> Dusting from top to bottom. I think we no. dust once every six months. No. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Change the bed linen. Yes, every week. We're religious about mm. that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> guys are slobs. <laughs> Vacuum carpets, rugs, and upholstery. I do that, mm. and I'll tell you why. I do it every week as I got a cordless vacuum, battery-operated. God, that's a lifesaver. That is so nice. Okay. I uh, I would say, if, I mean, again, remember, I'm not a complete slob because I do pay somebody to do this. <laughs> but keep in mind, we have to vacuum the couch because... It has become a problem in my marriage because now, now that now that Anna's here, Anna constantly lets the dogs inside, which uh, is fantastic. I love it. But she has now invited Homer to be a part of the family on the couch. And there is nothing that makes my husband more furious than when he goes to sit on the couch and it's dog hair. So now Anna knows once Homer goes outside, somebody, it's going to be her. It's not me. Come on. But <laughs> she has to vacuum the couch because if Chad's and we sneak it, like it's like it's a thing. Like, he's coming home. I, I'll, I'll look at the GPS. He's coming in. Get him down. Vacuum. And she like, ah! and she runs over. And gets the vacuum. And says, like I live in my house. Like like a terrorist. Like he's coming home. Oh my God, he's here. 
<laughs> Probably not healthy, but it's fine. It works. All the kids, are, Lucas and, and Anna and I are like, we're this whole, we're like a lying subsect of humans in this house. We're like, get him off the couch. Get the vacuum. Go, go, go. <laughs> He's pulling in the garage. Hold on. I'll hold him up. I'll run the, hey, you're home. Meanwhile, they're like vacuuming so fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one or two more in the every week category. Fold and put away the laundry. Yeah, we do oh. that. Do you do you fold your laundry or just throw it in a heap? I fold it. I fold it. Okay. I yeah. fold it when Chad does it. Why do we That's do that, job. by the way? Why don't we just throw it in a heap? Because then it gets wrinkled. Do we care? And I doesn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then this, you can tell this is from the 60s, because this hasn't been done in 40 years. Do any hand washing. If it can't go in the washing oh, machine no. and the dryer, I don't own it. Oh, no. Yeah. No, it gets tossed out. It yeah. has to be hand washed. I was thinking they meant wash your hands. No. That means, because um, <laughs> oh. in the old days, you had the yeah. delicates. You had to hand wash. Uh, no. Okay. Every month, this is where we really fail. Clean the inside of the oven and the microwave. No, no. That, that's a six-month no. thing. Wipe down the inside of the fridge. That's a one-year thing. That's an as-needed thing. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. spill? Cool. Yeah. As-needed. <laughs> Clean the inside of the bathroom cabinets. That's a one-you-move thing. That's, that's only exactly. when you Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never cleaned the inside of my bathroom cabinets. What? <laughs> no. Clean no. the lights, wipe the switches, and doorknobs. During COVID, no. maybe, but not since then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once a month, maybe. Maybe. Vacuum the skirting boards and vents. What? The, the, uh, no, no. No. I do wipe down the, the what do they call the boards along the floor there. I wipe those down once a year because they do get kind of dusty. Yeah, uh, but not once a month. I love this one. Disinfect the garbage bins. Does Lysol count? <laughs> <'Cause> that's, <laughs> okay, that's an as needed, like when something leaks out of your trash yes, bag. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you hose it out. Otherwise, it's yeah, Lysol it done. But it's yeah. not on a schedule. Okay, no. this is the last category, seasonally. <laughs> it depend how long the season is, I think. Clean the pantry, checking for expired items when you move. When you move. When you move. <laughs> I, do. Mother, I will say my mother does that regularly. Or I was going to say, when your parents die, you do it for them. And you find yeah. stuff from 1956 in the cabinet. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> My yes. mom and dad had this freezer, this chest freezer. They all did in those days, right? They all had the big chest freezer in the garage. And God, there was stuff in the bottom of that. It had to be 20 years old, so frosted over. <laughs> we didn't even know so, what it was. <laughs> so I was cleaning out my mom's linen closet the last Christmas, a year ago, and I found a bottle, a blue glass bottle of Milk of Magnesia from 1956. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> and, and so her reaction is, oh, do you think it's still good? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Uh, no. That stuff might no. be, actually. <laughs> <laughs> clean the inside of the kitchen cabinets. That's like the bathroom cabinets. If it gets no. dirty, you yeah, clean no. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wash the duvet covers, throw pillows, and blankets. Have you ever washed a throw pillow? Unless something spilled on it. I just throw them away. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> wash the windows, yeah, wash. curtains, and blinds seasonally. Yeah, once a year, maybe. Let maybe. me back up to the throw pillows. Yeah. Those become dog beds. Ah, there you go. That's perfect. I yep. repurpose. <laughs> I'm a recycler. Yeah. I'm all about. <laughs> and they want you seasonally to sort your wardrobe for items to clean, donate, or repair. Yeah, okay. That's uh, when you no. move, too. <laughs> we As just needed. went through that. We yeah, moved. I we will... got rid of a bunch of stuff. I will tell you, farm farm boy, he told us a story the other day. So his grandmother recently passed away and they were going through her house and they were in her room and they're sorting through her stuff and they go to move her mattress. And I know you think that I'm going to tell you that there's money under it. There wasn't. She lived, moved in this house in 1954. Okay. 1954. Same original mattress. Oh, oh my God! I have I have well, a better better one for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh God, you can Gross. beat that. that must have been. Oh, beat it must that. have been a hundred pounds. I could be oh. that. My mother, when she was my mother was born in 1923, so when she was 15, her parents bought her a mattress. So this is 1937. She is still sleeping on that same mattress. Oh God! Oh God! It's disgusting. Yeah, but you know what? She's 101, so it couldn't have hurt her too bad. No, she's doing fine. (laughs) Can't be comfortable anymore. Must have a huge hole in it. (laughs) (laughs) It does. It does. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I would say as horse people, as we would make terrible housewives of the 1960s. We would fail miserably as housewives. Yeah. I think, to oh, yeah. be honest, like of all of us, I think you're the best housewife. I do, too. I am, yes. actually. I, I do keep, I try and keep up with stuff, but I don't do all of those things. Nobody does all of those things. No. The lady who cleans my house does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I love Lisa. you, Amy. Adult Christmas is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, for joining us and being part of our nonsense. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. All right, Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. As horse owners, we have an unlimited supply of love for our animals, but we tend to underestimate the cost of their vet care. Routine and unexpected expenses can quickly add up, making it hard to keep pace. Wouldn't it feel great to always be prepared with a budget-friendly way to manage these costs? The Care Credit Health and Animal Care Credit Card can give you what that financial peace of mind that you're looking for. With flexible financing from Care Credit, you can get the care your horse needs as well as all the pets in your family. And then pay over time in easy monthly payments. You can use the Care Credit at more than 25,000 veterinary hospitals that accept the card. And use it to pay for everything from diagnostics to surgery to wellness exams and routine care. Care Credit, it's your card for a lifetime of care. Subject to credit approval. To learn more, apply at carecredit.com slash horses. That's carecredit.com slash horses. For first time horse owners and new riders, finding the information and support you need can be challenging. That's why Equine Network has partnered with Sentinel and Absorbing to bring you My New Horse. From important horse keeping information and how-to videos to social media communities, exclusive experiences, and more, My New Horse is your one-stop shop for riders of all levels and disciplines looking for easy-to-understand horse care information and guidance. Start your horse ownership journey today. Visit MyNewHorse.com. Pay it! I say pay attention. If you ain't met one by now, you're bound to sooner or later. He says one thing and he means another, but... Hey, he can't help it. He's a horse trader. Horse trading. Well, it's a laissez faire. Let the buyer beware. Horse trading. They tell a low down lie with a sincere stare. Horse trading. Well, if they're talking in circles and the deal ain't square, he's a master in the fine art of persuading. Horse trading. That's right. It's time for Really Bad Ads, that time of the week when we have listeners submit ads from Craigslist or Facebook, and we just have a little bit of fun with them. Really Bad Ads prizes are provided by Horselovers.com. That's Horselovers with a Z.com, home to over 120,000 products for your home, barn, horse, and you. Visit Horselovers with a Z.com. And we're going to give it's away those prizes. Day! Okay, we have three prizes we're going to give away today, and I have the Excel spreadsheet Jennifer gave me. It's between one and two hundred and twenty-three. Ooh, that's gonna a lot. Today. So, uh, the first one is an ovation. Is it Sphero? Sphero E R T helmet. We've been talking about these all month, so you know what it is. It's hundred dollar value, and this is one of the ones that reduces friction when it hits the ground and you slide. So that's it's a really good helmet, and we're going to give it away to somebody between one and two hundred and twenty three. Jamie, I thought you said two hundred twelve. What is two twenty three? Okay, two, let's go. Well, let me look again. Two twenty three. Okay, um, let's go two twenty three. Scroll on. Stephanie Martin. Congratulations, Stephanie. Good job. You just won a helmet. Now your head will be protected. Now, remember, every time you submit an ad, you also are in the running to win a prize. But keep in mind, if you record it yourself into your voice notes, like and email it in, then you get double the prize. If you record it in an accent that is not your own Triple the entries for that one. And the next one is the Weather Beat Out Grooming Tote Bag. $44 value. It's really awesome little tote bag. And Glenn, I'm going to pick number one. <laughs> Jerk. Taylor D. Seventino. Congratulations, Yay, Taylor. Taylor. She submits all the time. Good job, Taylor. I'm glad I'm glad you won that, and I hope you have some use for it. And the last one is the Slow Feeder Hay Bag by Weather Beat Pick a number. I'm going to go easy on you. I'll go with two. Rachel Wiley. Congratulations to Rachel. Ooh. Isn't that? Yeah, she was just here for my clinic. Fantastic. Oh, okay. And she feeds her horses with a hay net. No, she did. Oh, well, that's perfect. I, I did not know 
that she was number two, I swear. That's awesome. Way to go, no, Rachel. Jamie can't see the list. So congratulations, all three of them. And what will happen is I will contact Horse Lovers in the next week or two. They will get back to you by email. So keep an eye on your email to get your address and things to send them out. All right, let's do this week's really bad ads. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> this is funny Jennifer so we always read the also submitted if you don't hear yours and so there's always like some names that we read off that Jen- so Jennifer puts all this together and the also submitted she puts this in well the also submitted she said sorry I accidentally deleted it so you're still in <laughs> but she if you deleted don't hear it. your name you were part of that list send your email of complaint to Jennifer at horseradionetwork.com <laughs> and she will delete that as well and, or if you have ads send it to her too yeah. Uh, Amanda sent this one in very short horse $3,000 in Morgantown probably West Virginia although there's a lot of Morgantowns 15 year old building that's right building like the house gentle and friendly <laughs> loves trail riding safe for anyone to ride so if you want a building that's safe to ride you can find it for $3,000 in Morgantown proofread proofread do you All think right, they were Rachel? trying to say gelding because th- we have had gelding spelled every which way but never we as have- a building Nope, never is a building, so that's a new one. That would be gwilding if they got the G. Maybe they put the G upside down. No, that's not right. Okay, Rachel sent the next one in. <sighs> oh, he's so cute. She would. Yeah, see? Five-year-old mutt. All oh, once, no punctuation. Five-year-old Mustang needs lots of work. Can catch him. Brush him very fast. He extremely smart. You can brush him very fast. (laughs) You can brush him so fast. (laughs) I didn't know that was a a selling point. And to be honest, looking at these, there's two pictures posted. There's a horse in a blue halter and there's a horse in a red halter. That's not the same horse. I was going to ask you that. It didn't look that way to me either. There might be two different Mustangs, but they're not the same horse. They're not the same horse, even though it's. Yeah, this one, yeah, but it's bad. And How about let's that? Talk to, let's talk about your your Mustang you had that was extremely smart. That caused a lot of problems, didn't it, by the way? Yeah. The, <laughs> when reading between the lines, when they say he's very smart, that means he escapes a lot or gets away with anything. Like he's too smart. He's very clever. Yes. Yes. You had one of those. <laughs> Michelle sent this one in. In upstate New York, everything horses and goats. <laughs> For sale, sound, barefoot, great, old foundation, breeding, 12XX, Stamford, New York. Old foundation what? Yeah, but I'm looking at these pictures. Those are terrible pictures. It's like a horse that's in a field and it's walking up to you and it's walked out of the camera. Like, so you can only see the very top part of it as it's walking past you to get to the feed beater. Mm, Not only that, we don't know how old, we don't know what breed, we don't know any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it's old foundation, whatever that is. She'll ever sent this one in. Okay. This is a Facebook ad. I think, I think so. And this is in Hampshire, Illinois. He's three coming four and almost 15 H stout, nice mover, bread for the all around and definitely bread to be with someone else who wants to do. (laughs) (laughs) He's bread not to be with me. Bread for someone else who wants to do things very slow. He's been out on camping trips, ridden through town, into the bar, and was driven once. Don't get me wrong. He's a phenomenal kid slash husband prospect, which is what I love to work with. But my future husband is going to be widowed before we even get married if I have to sit on this thing one more time. I cannot handle boring, and he is just that for me. I need this horse. This would be perfect. Wait, what? Wait, wait. Why, why is he going to kill you if he's boring? Uh, oh, so what she's saying is she's going to die of boredom being on the horse. Oh, source. I thought it was like when no, she said he, she was going to be widowed, like the horse was going to kill her. Okay. No. Someone come be my new favorite person and take him far, far away. <laughs> Your new purebred good boy is waiting in my pasture. Oh, I want him. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, this one horse would be perfect. You just have to go to Hampshire. It's all sp- he's got po- spots. Polka dotted. Yeah. He's, it sounds like he's my kind of horse. <laughs> Heather sent this one in. This is in the Pacific Northwest. 
Two horse straight load. Tires are great. Flooring isn't too bad. Divider is broken. Needs a small weld. This trailer would be perfect for a project. A fruit stand? A coffee stand? <laughs> when it says it's perfect for a fruit stand, you know, you don't want to put your horse in it. Yeah, I don't know. No. I will add more pictures shortly. And it's a distant picture of a trailer in a field. I don't know if the tires have air. You can't tell. It is blocked up on blocks, so the hitch might work. It looks like it's been in a wreck. $2,000 is way too much money for a horse trailer you're going to use for goats. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Too too much. Faye sent the next one in, and the title is a Facebook page called, God, there's a Facebook page for everything, Half Draft Horses. (sighs) Would you like to play a riveting game of who's the daddy? (laughs) (laughs) Would you also like to get a steal on an in full Clydesdale mare that is broke to drive and started riding? Yes, I would then, actually. Boy, do I have a mare for you. Welcome to Mari, baby. Oh, like Mari Povich. Welcome to Mari, baby. So here's the deal. We breed draft crosses. There is a 95% chance this mare is carrying a purebred black Clydesdale due April 1st. There is also a 5% chance that it's not a Clyde. And in fact, a guaranteed spotted half Appaloosa. Listen. You know, either one of those would be okay, I think. <laughs> oh, listen. So this happened during a time where I had no plans to sell her, so I didn't really care too much about the mishap. We were embracing her <laughs> brat girl summer. <laughs> Awesome. But life <laughs> happens and she is priced to move. I start school in January and she is just one I'm willing to let go of. Okay, hold on. So you a full draft is very different than a draft at Belusa Cross. So you you prepare for the big one. Okay. Yes. Here next set. Two weeks free board included in purchase while shipping arranged. $8,500. Well, they didn't even say how old she is. No, they really didn't. Right? No. I didn't. Oh, I do not respond to comments. I don't know. She looks like a big draft horse. Yeah. Yeah. Draft horse. (laughs) Yeah. We'll go get her, Glenn. I like her. I think she's cute. Where Uh, is she? Where did it say? It didn't. It, it didn't say. So there's, it's, it's also a great ad, but also a really bad ad. <laughs> <laughs> Paige sent this one in. Rehoming a really nice eight-year-old ranch machine. He is big and stout. You name it, he can rope it on him. He is about 15.6 hands. Woo! <laughs> Here we go again. 16-2, baby. <laughs> Which we all know really means 14-2. That's yeah. it. We all know that that's what that means. You always count it up being a hand less than what the ad says. Jennifer's Sarah's... had experience with that recently, too, haven't you, Jennifer? Really? <laughs> She's had the she same experience look... you do. Go out there and it's a hand less than they say. Yeah. To, to be fair, I one time I was like, okay, it said the horse was 15-3. And I was like, perfect. I'm so ready for like a smaller thoroughbred. And I go out and look at him and he was 16-2. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's not how this that's works. That's not normal. <laughs> no. Sarah sent this one in. Three horses. Okay. <laughs> All these horses are great. $850. There's a picture of each horse. There's a little bay horse with a star. It says five-year-old gelding, $850. Then there's a very distant picture of what they say is a five-year-old mare, $850. And then another distant picture of a paint-type horse called seven-year-old gelding, $850. Here's the ad. Three horses that don't want to buck much. (laughs) Age, gender, and price on every photo. More pictures and comments. None are halter broke and been saddled. Expect in shoots. Located, oh, Lord have mercy, in (laughs) Dunstan, Oklahoma. Obviously part of a rodeo bucking string, maybe? Oh, I see. So they don't want to buck much. Like they basically saddled them. Yeah, yeah, this this is a bucking horses. I bet Dustin. Oh, Dustin, Oklahoma. That sounds very Oklahoma. So, 
There Good you go. luck. Good, pr- you know, they didn't overprice them anyway. So that's the little seven year old girl is pretty cute. Where's yes. Dustin, Oklahoma? I need to map that. <laughs> he is pretty cute, actually. Kind of has a little draft horsey face. Isabel sent the next one in Warm Blood Horses Under $20,000 Facebook page. <laughs> there is a page for everything. This is all the sad says. I have a pre St. George horse free if you can ride him and want him. He is 20 and sound. No picture. Okay, that's a scam right there. <laughs> He's free if Nobody's you can ride. Nobody's giving a St. George horse away for free. <laughs> Sorry. Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I don't get it. I, why would you? He's free if you can ride him. Like, is that a challenge? Like, do I need to get involved <laughs> well, in this? he's a pre St. George horse, so only certain people will be able to ride him at pre St. George level. But they don't usually give those away for free, even at 20 years old. But what what's the benefit of that scam? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I don't know. Other than get a deposit. Oh, you got to pay a deposit to get them yeah, shipped. Probably. You know what? What the hell? I'll do it. Let's <laughs> see. Give, me the, give me the contact. <laughs> you have, excuse me. You haven't been uh, scammed enough. <laughs> I know. Uh, Shannon sent this one in. She recorded herself. So she got double the entries. Hey, this is Shannon calling from Virginia with a really Hi, bad Shannon. ad. It's a, actually a really good ad. And actually, I'm not in Virginia. I'm actually calling from Kentucky at the Thoroughbred Makeover right now. All right, here we go. You know what they say, no sense in being the richest B***h in the cemetery. You might as well buy the pony. Hell yeah! If you don't want to play lawn darts with small children, maybe you should just give me a hot second here and take a little gander at what this dude has to offer. Although he is a short 37 inches... Gary has a dad bod that we can all appreciate. <laughs> not too thick, not too thin. Just the right amount of fluffy around the edges to give the best hugs. At seven years young, he's not going to cost you your soul in maintenance and upkeep. He's also not going to... <laughs> when your kid tries to drag him around from I didn't the back do that. of it was the wheels or loses their absolute mind when they're 20 minutes past nap time. Can't promise he won't judge your parenting for it, though. Of freaking course he rides and drives, independently or on a lead line. That means if your kid decides to pack up their things and Oregon trail it to grandma's, he's going to take it <laughs> without you. But if your kid is like mine and wants to enjoy the scenery and sing some songs while you lie to yourself that they will absolutely love riding one day, he'll do that job too. Gary will also drive. I have some video. But I think we have covered that before in previous ad that I don't drive ponies. Like I said, curbs and my husband's both scream when I drive. Imagine the terror I would cause with a pony cart. (laughs) Gary has been taken to shows, has off-property experience, ponies, and loads up and hauls like a champ. In the barn, he's happy to play dress-up, gladly cross-ties, picks up all four feet without launching you into next week, stands to be groomed, and absolutely will not bite your arm off. Yay for that. Gary also isn't a ball of mashed potatoes and has no founder history. Unfortunately, you won't get your daily steps in while catching him because he stands at the gate to be caught. He won't try to break your fence and escape from you. Gladly rides in a snaffle or a halter, English, Western, or a bareback. Worst thing about Gary, you should just put a fly mask on him when it's sunny. This guy has blue eyes. He will take care of you if you take care of him. It's not asking too much. Come check him out. FaceTime with me or watch some video. He's a super cool guy many will appreciate. He'd look pretty freaking cool dressed up as a unicorn, too. But what do I know? Happy to FaceTime with him in hand. Happy to chat. I'm a professional yapper, as most know. Just judging by Please the length of the ad. Please check with your husband, wife, instructor, <laughs> or your uncle's fish's brother who used to ride a Shetland from the Sears magazine approximately 74 years ago before inquiring. Good or Lord! Don't. I'll still talk to you. Let's be honest. <laughs> Have a great day, y'all. Take care. There's one poor uh, person. Do not go there. You will never leave. You'll you will <laughs> never get out. Yeah. I feel like I'm blaming it like on Shannon, like like that was her, but she was just reading it. I'm like, oh my God, she's so wordy. <laughs> God, you know you're gonna get there and you're gonna be there for four hours. You're just yeah. not gonna be able to leave. 
And you're going to leave I, the horse there just because you don't want to go back to pick it up. I'm I'm at the point now where I'm like, I kind of lost interest in what she was actually selling. I don't even yes. remember. I think it was a mini. I don't know. See, it was a pony of some I sort. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for sending your ads in. If you want to send them in for next week, send them to Jennifer at horseradionetwork.com. We, ap- we appreciate you playing along to the, our nonsense every Friday for the last 14 years. There's always more bad ads. And we'll have a new batch of prizes for you as well. And thank you all for joining us today. Jamie will not be here on Monday. Ashley's going to fill in, by the way. I did talk to her. So Ashley and I will be here on Monday while Jamie's up supporting the local economy that needs it uh, a lot in uh, the I will, of North I will, Carolina. So I talked about, I think this was post-show, I talked about how we are going to go to Pigeon Forge, yep. Gatlinburg, Dollywood. And so you gave me a list of activities yep. that you recommended. And so I looked up all those activities and I put them on the screen and I said, Chad, come in here. Glenn has made some recommendations. And Chad looks over and he goes, not doing that. Not doing that. Not doing that. Not That's doing your that. job to do that. <laughs> Not doing that. <laughs> He's like, he goes, and then he said the dreaded words. And I mean, I want to be that kind of wife, but he's like, we're going to go hiking. Oh, yeah. There awesome. You go. That is going to be really fun. I mean, it's beautiful, but we are going to Dollywood. We're going to go to the amusement if park. If you go and- there and don't go to Dollywood, you're, you're, it's a sin. I know you have yeah, to, you have yeah. to, and the kids love the roller coaster. So we're going to go do that. Nice. Who doesn't um, want to support Dolly? All those other activities that you mentioned, he's like, nope, nope, nope. definitely no, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> he's not a show kind of guy. <laughs> so he's picturing this, this, well, he could go hiking. You guys could go to the shows. Yeah. I, it sounds like a fun family vacation. You go over there. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> I know you though. I know one hike for about three hours in the mountains is going to be good for you. That's going to be. Um, I will. I found, I'm like, we can just drive to the top. Like you can. Yes. We can, yes. We can just drive there. Why do we have to walk? No, Ugh. you can drive there and you, you hike up a little bit on a macadam uh, thing and you're at the top. Yeah. We're going to the catechan, whatever the highest point is. We're going to do that. And then Dome. We, yeah. Yes, yep. that's it. And then we rented a place that has like it got like a community tennis court and all that. He just wants to kind of like do have that. Have you ever we, tried pickleball? We've talked about this before, but they I, have a pickleball court. Have We're you gonna tried do it? it? No, I haven't ever uh, done it. Well, and your shoulder would probably be tough. <laughs> oh no, but that, that's my that's a wheelhouse. Like I could just low hit <laughs> <laughs> that or ping pong. I'm I'm strong in the ping pong game right now. Mm-hmm. Well, have fun yeah. hiking all weekend. Woo! <laughs> if you go there and don't take Anna to Dollywood, I'm I'm going to quit this show. No, we're going to Dollywood. <laughs> okay. We're going to Dollywood. I got to give me some Dolly Parton. I love her. So yeah. I'm excited about that part. Yeah, the museum Wait. there is is really good. It, it, her, it's a Dolly museum. It's really good, too. Yeah, I even told I was like, there's a Titanic museum. There's all these things. And he was like, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, definitely not. No, no. He was like, the comedy? No, no, no. What's family, he got against comedy? comedy. <laughs> we'll go see Kevin Hart. We're not going to go to a family friendly comedy place. <laughs> He's like, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> you know who's coming to town into Ocala, which is the first time, is the guys from Whose Line Is It Anyway are on the road. And, oh, that's cool. And they're coming to Ocala, but I can't go. It's a day we can't go. I'd love to see them. Oh, bummer. That'd, that'd be fun. Yeah, that would be fun to see them. I wonder if the show's still on. I don't know. Anyway. That's it for today. Auditors, hang on. We've got to talk about something, a project that Jamie is doing with Anna. We'll talk about that in the post show. Mm-hmm. Spay, neuter, 